We went over every single new Pokemon in Sword and Shield's expansion, and a lot of news from the trailer, but let's look into what leaks have been proven and what details were given with those, and even some of the updates Pokemon has given to us with events and new features. The recent leaks have been about new Pokemon types, a list of moves, a few abilities, and some items. So far a lot of it has been confirmed and we'll be looking a little more in depth to see what has specifically been shown to us and what else in these leaks can be possibly shown on the 17th. First we have all the new highlighted Pokemon in the trailer. There's the Regis, Galarian Slowbro, Gigantamax Venusaur and Blastoise, Gigantamax Urshifu, and the three Galarian birds that had a large focus on them with abilities and signature moves. Turns out Galarian Slowbro was in fact a Psychic Poison type, and while that is a confirmed new type, that doesn't make the whole post completely factual here, it is a good guess for sure. The Fairy Poison Dust Tox does seem a little bit more believable out of all of these, as Clara has that bow, and also has her Dynamax Ball being thrown and cut out before a Pokemon can be shown for her instead of a split screen. That could be a sign to make out this new form to be more likely than we first believed, especially with her outfit being more on the fairy looking side of things while being a Poison type trainer. She might just have a slow bro though, but while Slowking could be a Poison type too, it has been confirmed that it'll be in the Crown Tundra and not the Isle of Armor. So at that, even if it's the same type as Slowbro, it's assumed that she won't have a signature Slowking. It being a psychic ghost like it says in the post isn't proven yet, but it's basically wandering in limbo right now since we don't know when it's getting released. After that we have them calling Regilecki Regivolt and Regidrago, which was Draco yesterday on sites and I didn't see the Pokemon site update till now, being called Regidrake, so sure close enough, I mean it's not correct but neither was I and at least we're trying. In terms of other leaks that are not this post, the Max Honey and Max Mushrooms haven't been revealed, but with the new Max Soup allowing you to give your Dynamax Pokemon the ability to Gigantamax, they look like real item ingredients to create some specialized Max Soups for your Pokemon. The Galerica Twig and Cuff are looking to be items to evolve your Slowpoke as well. The Cuff looks to be Slowbro's item, and the Twig for Slowking. Some of the other items like the EXP Charm, Style Card, and possibly the Mark Charm could also be the rare items that are being alluded to by the Cramomatic the little recycling machine Cramoranth that has a chance to give some rare items that aren't listed yet. They could also be rewards in the tournament, where you go back and fight some story trainers, but rolling the dice on this recycling machine seems like it could be fun for at least one of these items. The 100% confirmed item however is the Armorite Ore, which is a much more differently confirmed leak than seeing someone else guess the purple pink Slowbro type. This also leads us into confirming a few moves from the 21 leaked move list as the Armorite Ore will be used to get yourself some nice move tutor moves, like Burning Jealousy and Grassy Glide, both of which are listed here on the leaked full move list of attacks coming soon to Pokemon Sword and Shield. There is also the Shell Sidearm, which is actually correct but a lot of people thought it was Sidearm Smash, probably me too, but it was maybe another translation name like Reggie Draco. It is now confirmed as Shell Sight Arm on the Pokemon website, and with that being something that was leaked, without Slowbro's arm cannon even being revealed yet, you've got to give it up for keeping the Mega Man Slowbro a secret, and for that leak being real. Surging Strikes and Wicked Blow are here as well, which are signature moves for both Urshifu forms. It could be likely that some of these other moves are differently named moves that have already been released, something like Lash Out might be Venusaur's G-Max move Vine Lash, or it could be a possible new signature move for Venusaur as a new Frenzy Plant without the turn of reloading. But it's a lot more exciting to see what these moves could be for and what they look like as well as the fact that some of these are confirmed and knowing that the rest will definitely be brought into the games. Maybe the teapot is getting something special with Poltergeist. The two abilities have also been straight up confirmed, Quick Draw for Slowbro and Unseen Fist for both Arshifu forms as it says right here. That brings us to a total of 9 confirmed leaks in the expansion so far, including Jungle Healing as that was released a while ago, but excluding the Slowbro type since that isn't 100% known to not just be a guess, and I don't think you can guess Armorite or Unseen Fist. All of those give a lot of exciting features to the games, and it will be great to see what else can be confirmed or if any new leaks come out. For news and new features that we didn't go as in depth into, there is currently a Gigantamax festival going on from Monday, June 1st until Monday, June 29th at 4:59 PDT, where many different Gigantamax Pokémon will be appearing for you to encounter in max raid battles, depending on your game version. Snorlax will be in both, and then it's just a cluster of fighters trying to average out the popularity of each in both games. This way you can be able to complete your Pokemon collection before the game expansions come out. There's also a Sword and Shield Mystery Gift distribution with Galarian Meowth running from June 12th at 5pm PDT to June 16th at 4.59 PDT. 
It will have its hidden ability and even come with 50 big nuggets and 100 EXP candy to prepare for the launch of the DLC. It'll be good to have some more money in game to buy stuff and throw it in the cram o -matic. Hopefully this means more events will happen even during the expansion and upgrade your encounters and things like the Max Raid Dens. As those look like they'll be one of the best additions to the game where you can explore through the dens with teammates and get the chance to catch Dynamax Pokemon for your team. But get kicked out if you lose. Maybe a little Mystery Dungeon minigame to add some more gameplay time into the mix and looks like a fun co-op adventure, hopefully sparking new events as well. We also see the dojo and towers in a new way. The atmosphere also looks really good and a great experience to explore. There's many small areas that come off as amazing. This huge plum tree, the winter forest, there's many places that look exciting to explore. And something we didn't go into in the last video was the new descriptions on the Pokemon website that were added in for some new Pokemon. Looking at these, it doesn't seem like they're trying to hint at anyone new. The Regis do have some tidbits in their description like Reggie Drago saying that Folklore tells that the legendary Pokemon, Reggie Gigas, didn't see that anywhere in the leaks, or revealed yet, tried to create a Pokemon from crystallized dragon energy but ran out of crystals and was only able to complete the head. We've got another Pokemon that needs to be completed. Game Freak is adding up a lot of puzzle pieces here with missing pieces and hopefully follows through where either the dragon form is completed or Regigigas gets a form as well. Preferably they combine and attach to one another, seeing as they can't create the full dragon, but possibly use the power of Regieleki, who was fitting in special insulating equipment as people were afraid of it and wanted to restrain its powers, and have all these Pokemon unleashed into creating much more powerful forms. It would also make sense as they're smaller and can look to unlock an ability where they grow. It's also a bit of a coincidence that the dragon form is the one missing a body and was only able to be completed as the head. There's a few other dragons with swapped around body parts that might need some help putting the pieces back together. That seems like the only thing that could possibly be leaked at any point or revealed if they're trying to add in a new story to the Reggie line with these add-in backstories of restricting how powerful these two are, and hopefully even drives them back to fixing up those fossil forms. The Galarian Bird Trio looks to also create a bit of a stir, as since there is no other legendary trio that is yet to be shown, they may have been taken to the Galar skies by flying, or jumping if you're Zapdos, and finding a new king. Articuno now being a psychic flying type, just like its old leader Lugia, and changing from the graceful Pokemon into a cruel Pokemon, literally the cruel Pokemon, possibly meaning it might have taken the typing of Lugia and tries to be the new leader. It would make sense with its ability competitive, and seeing as these forms are available in the Crown Tundra, Calyrex might have a story intact with these three where Articuno is the number one villain of the land. The Flying Dark Moltres is a little bit more mischievous, and Galarian Zapdos is just cool in the Strong Legs Pokemon, so that's not a real threat to the domain of Galar. But Articuno's massive personality swap and its freezing glare might make for a Pokemon that's a rival to Calyrex in the Crown Tundra quest. Pony might be ready for a new story. That guy looks decked out. He's ready to fight against the cruelest bird there is while the other two just have fun on the sides. Calyrex might replace Lugia as the trio leader of Gen 8, while Lugia goes and has a great time in the Max Raid Dens. But seeing as Articuno was the one that couldn't even be captured by Lawrence III and now has a rematch for power with its new arrogant ways in a very familiar environment, there might be a new story that unfolds. Calyrex is delicate and graceful, and it's said to see every past, present, and future event. Maybe you can see what past events happened to Articuno to turn into this completely different Pokemon. One thing I wanted to share with you guys is the confirmed returning of Pokemon that have been seen in the trailer and will be in the expansion. A lot of notable returning Pokemon will be here, with most legendary Pokemon being brought into the Crown Tundra. Seeing Pokemon like Absol being in the trailer is nice to know seeing as it means that a lot of favorites will be popping back in as well as Mewtwo showing up in a Max Raid Den as a surprise and going into the montage of legendary Pokemon returning to this new dungeon experience. Nice to see the Regis also getting a home, and hopefully bringing back Regigigas without slow start now that it's got a power generator lackey. You can find a list of Pokemon that will be available in the expansion so far here, and seeing which of your old time heroes have made their return. There is still a possibility for more Pokemon and new forms that haven't been shown yet, but it's likely we won't be finding any leaks very soon, like when Sword and Shield was released. We have the new characters, Muster the Dojo Master, the two decked out trainers, and Pony the Guide to your legendary adventures in the Tundra, as well as new Pokemon, new art for those in Gigantamax forms, and the many features we've discussed here today. We did manage to get some confirmation on some of the leaks as well. The moves, items, and abilities are the most proven leaks to where we can look forward to seeing what else those sources bring in, and if any new information comes up from there. Seeing things like Steel Roller, Meteor Beam, or Dual Winged Beef is just exciting to hear that they're confirmed, 
and it's something to look forward to when we can finally use it. The post about leaked Galarian forms and Gigantamax forms is significantly more unlikely, but could still possibly pull out one or two Pokemon from there out of luck. More than likely not, but it would be great to get more regional forms, and hopefully they're just well hidden. We've still got a chance, Dunsparce.